Gauss-Jordan elimination method is a procedure for transforming a system of linear equations ax equal to b to an equivalent system rx equal to d, where r is in reduced row echelon form. And the method uses only elementary row operations. The process of transforming a matrix into reduced row echelon form is sometimes called row reduction. Instead of giving the pseudo code for the method here, we are just going to look at an example to see how row reduction is done. Let's first recall the three elementary row operations. The first type of operation is multiplying a row by a non-zero constant. The second type of operation is adding a constant multiple of a row to another row. And the third type of operation is exchanging two rows. And we're going to look at the system ax equal to b, where a is the matrix given here x is the tuple of variables x1 up to x4, and b is the tuple 3, 1, 1. The augmented matrix for the system is this. And we are going to row reduce this matrix, that is, to transform it to a matrix in reduced row echelon form using elementary row operations. So if we look at this matrix, we have a leading one in the first row, but we have numbers that are non-zero underneath it. And so we need to perform elementary row operations to make sure that the entries below our leading one in the first row are all zero. And we can accomplish this by replacing row two with row two plus minus two times row one, and replacing row three by row three plus row one. And we're going to perform both operations in one go. And this is the matrix that we'll end up with. Now, in the second row and the third row, the leftmost non-zero entry is not 1. So we're going to fix this by replacing row 2 with minus a quarter times row 2, and replacing row 3 by 1 half times row 3. And this is what we get. The leading one in the third row is to the left of that in row 2. So we'll swap rows 2 and 3. To clear the entry above the leading one in row 2, we can simply add row 2 to row 1. And finally, we clear the entries above the leading one in row 3. And this matrix is in reduced row echelon form. The variables corresponding to the first three columns correspond to the leading ones. So if you just want one solution to the system, you can set x4 to 0 and set x1, x2, and x3 to 5 quarters, 3 quarters, and 5 quarters, respectively. But if you want to obtain all the solutions, you will need to set x4 to some parameter s. Here, x4 is the only free variable, and so setting x4 equals to s, we get from the first row that x1 has to equal 5 quarters minus 2s, x2 equals 3 quarters minus s, x3 is 5 quarters. And so we can write this as the tuple x1, x2, x3, x4 equals 5 quarters minus 2s, 3 quarters minus s, 5 quarters s. And this is a solution for every real number s. So this example illustrates the process of row reduction, and we did so without following blindly a stated algorithm. What we did was, every step of the way, we tried to make the matrix closer and closer to 1 in reduced row echelon form. One final remark, no matter how you transform a matrix into a matrix in reduced row echelon form using elementary row operations, you always get the same matrix. As a result, we can refer to the reduced row echelon form of a matrix, and that's the language that we'll often employ from now on.